We're going to start with the uh, PSR Fast Green image. Yes, it's called PSR Fast Green Happy Holidays. Oh, wait, I don't think we've actually, you might have seen this yet. Open an image. Um, if you go to the image tab, um, if you've loaded the CZI image, this doesn't exist in the converted TIFF OME um, that some people with Macs have to be working with, but for the, those opening the CZIs directly, go to the macro image. This is a slide uh, put together by our histology patients. I think it was Brett. It's Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> Saw things at AQLM too. It was shot from the vendors. Yeah. Um, you can also uh, double click and it'll show you whatever was on the slide label when we scanned it. Oh. Okay. Uh, so someone asked me yesterday about looking at fibers. I don't remember who it was. Um, but this this is how you'd analyze it. Uh, Ken, do you want to talk about whatever the model this is and what PSR is? I don't know the specific chemistry behind PSR. I'll have to defer to some of our histology experts, but uh, it stands for Mavic. Most of the classical histological stands for Mavic. <laughs> you don't want to know. Alchemy. Yeah. yeah. Pico serious red. Pico serious red. And uh, the red stains uh, collagen. Uh, I forget which types. And um, the uh, Counter stain is obviously green. So most of you are familiar with Masson's trichrome um, and trying to visualize fibrosis with Masson's trichrome. Almost anybody who uh, sees uh, a side-by-side -side comparison of the same tissue stained with trichrome versus stained with this, who is interested in fibrosis, uh, usually recognizes that this is a, a better stain for it. And as I understand, it lends itself better to image analysis. So, uh, I mean, uh, Again, this is a sort of a, a snippet from um, that big um, um, Christmas tree that you saw. But one thing you'll notice here is there is there is a change. And this isn't necessarily disease. But if you'll notice, kind of surrounding this kind of vessel, this kind of vessel, uh, this kind of vessel, um, the areas look more solid green. Whereas uh, if you get over here, um, you know, they, they kind of look more more pale. And the reason for that is that the hepatocytes in these areas, they have um, these microvacuoles. Uh, and believe it or not, it's somewhat of a controversial topic amongst pathologists, what these vacuoles mean. Is it is it is it fat? Is it glycogen? Is it vacuolar hepatopathy? Should we use the word hepatop hep hepatopathy? Because that implies disease. But nevertheless, uh, it's, it's not, um, you know, we're not going to resolve that here today. Here's some red cells, you know, uh, inside that vessel. And, um, you know, every every tissue has its own organization and there's different ways to think of different tissues. But uh, the liver is one of my favorites because there's a geometry to the liver. And um, it's somewhat apparent here. It's much more apparent like in a pig that has a, uh, a little bit more uh, collagen uh, in its liver. But if you, if you Google something like liver lobule, zone, hexagon, you'll kind of see where this pattern is coming from. Essentially, uh, in zone three, um, I believe it's zone three, make sure I'm not getting this reversed. Yeah, so there's some smaller structures here that tell me that this is a, a portal vessel. Um, and this is zone one. And then um, sort of as you get further out from zone one, you get to zone two and zone three. Long story short, uh, these uh, vacuolated hepatocytes are occurring more uh, along uh, zone three. So that's one interesting thing. Uh, another piece of liver kind of showing the same thing. And then there's this tissue. I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out what this was. Um, there's some sort of, uh, I don't know, some medullary cords. I was thinking it's adrenal, but then when I saw the big blow up image or the LOMAG image that Sarah just showed, um, it's a little uh, too uh, too big to be adrenal. So, anybody have any thoughts on what this was? What this is? I was just looking at it. Sorry, gallbladder, kidney, tumor of some sort. Uh, I'm quite certain it's not spleen. Gallbladder is very thin. I'm not saying that this isn't. I, I know maybe you, you weren't saying that this is gallbladder, but gallbladder would be somewhere in the region, um, but is not uh, shown on this uh, tissue. So, perhaps kidney, but in these cords, there's a lot of uh, erythrocytes. Spleen, spleen will look different than this. I thought it was adrenal gland too, but look at look at the size comparison. Then again, it could be that this is not from the same species as this. Is that possible, Brett? No, it's all mice. <laughs> it's all mice. Okay. Well, it's it's something to talk about at dinner. For those of you who are not pathologists, which is very much me, um, the part we care about for this moment is that red means collagen. 
Um, and you don't really want all this fibrosis in your life, but you definitely want to measure the amount of fibrosis in this thingy. So we bloated the fast green. Um, we're going to set deconvolution vectors. Uh, Qpath is going to be this as an HDAP image, likely, um, which is fine. You can set it to bright fields other if you want, because it's not actually an HDAP, uh, but it's not, whichever one of these it is, it's not going to affect results at all. Um, and in fact, when you go to the same deconvolution, it's still going to say dab. It's cool. Um, so I'm going to find, yeah, here we go. Once again, smallish region, lots of background, green, some red. Analyze, estimate stain vectors. Uh, yes, use modal values. Um, and as you can see in this case, because it thinks it's dab, the defaults are very wrong. Let's hit auto, it gets there. Cool. It's fine that it says that. And looking at the results, so now two, which is hematoxylin, is green, and three, which is dab, is red. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, it really doesn't matter what your stains are, as long as there's two basic colors, you can deconvolve them. I'll get back. Um, then we're going to make an overall tissue classifier using the thresholder that we used this morning on the, the colon sample. Classify, fix the classification, create a thresholder. Um, by, uh, the default is going to say use the red channel, um, but this I actually want to use the average channels uh, so that we're getting both the red and green simultaneously. Uh, the above threshold is going to be region again. Um, uh, so, sorry, that's incorrect. The above threshold is unclassified. The below threshold is region. Um, in bright field images, the background is high because that's 255. The tissue is dark, and therefore it's like a, a lower, lower than threshold. And 220 is usually, 220 is actually usually pretty good. This classifier is going to be liver. When you say usually, that definitely means with well taken. With yes, yes. Stuff, right back. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, very low resolution is fine for what we're doing here. Once you've um, created your classifier and saved it, you can create objects. Um, this is just like we did before. We're going to use the full image. Um, and 100,000 or 100,000 is probably correct. Uh, it, it, if you used the region class, it is important that this um, is selected. Oh, um, also, we want to split objects because we want this left this piece of tissue to be read separately from this piece of tissue um, and from this one. How did you get to the blue things? Uh, classify, fix a classifier, create threshold. Maybe I need it. Um, so it actually made four pieces of tissue, bottom left, top, uh, bottom right, and this top little thing is apparently just over 100,000. Um, I, I don't want to deal with that at all, so I'm just going to delete it. It's gone now. Yes. Create objects. And what were your settings there under create objects? Uh, full image. And then I put 100,000, 100,000, but you could probably do a million and a million and not get that little flip on the top left. Mm -hmm. 
split objects just yes the larger islands oh okay. i it, it um gets you three separate things yeah so uh, apparently um those of you working with the oma tip converted images you might have some like weird edge artifacts uh sometimes the threshold will make them go away i uh, like either I, I can't see it so i don't know but raising it no lowering it raising it won't make it go away um Um, and when you're when you're setting a threshold, spaces like this are really important to pay attention to. You don't want you want them to be disconnected. So set set your threshold to another one. That's right. Um, once you've created objects, by default they're locked. But if you're unhappy with it, like there is some weird edge thing, or they're connected, or you just you see, oh, uh, I I don't know what this is, but I don't want it there. You can of course. Right click, unlock, and then use the editing tools we were practicing yesterday. So I'm going to go to the brush. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and uh, delete this whole thingy and just make that. When you're done, um, for your own sanity, uh, lock them again. Otherwise, you will at some point accidentally delete it. We're going to make it. Yes. Yes. Um, let me show you. Unlock. Uh, I'll, I'll just put that back. Rush, hold Alt, and draw a line such that they are, such that they like they look separated. So all the way through whatever's connecting them. Then right click, annotations. Edit, split. And now it, they're both still highlighted because you had selected them both, but now I can select them separately and delete that. And um, there's always something new on each edition of the workshop or course. So there's also objects, annotations, Split annotations by lines. Oh uh, yeah, I ha I haven't gotten to touch that yet. Yes. Uh, classify pixel, uh, load pixel classifier. Um, that's if you close that like the threshold or window, um, or you could get there through just create objects. So from here, we want to actually measure the amount of fiber in each of these sections individually. Um, so zoom in on a region. Um, so we're going to make a, a new special, book, but it's still a pixel classifier. So we're going to go to classify, pixel classifier, create special. Book. This time we want to use, let's go with very high resolution. Um, some of your computers might actually be able to process uh, the full resolution at, at 0.1 pixels per pixel. Point, point one microns per pixel. Uh, um, but for demos, I'm going to do uh, very high. And I want to use the deconvolved DAB channel. If you've forgotten which is which, because neither of them are actually DAB, um, go to your image tab, and it, it's whichever one is labeled red. Okay. Um, then I'm, I'm going to press three to turn on the DAB. And so you can see that there's a, the tissue itself picks up a little bit of background. Um, and in the lower right corner, um, you can, uh, here, um, this has a value of like 0 0.12, 0 0.15, um, and the, the true fibers have a value of like around one somewhere. So let's set a threshold of 0 0.2. Um, and um, so that once it's like deconvolved and we're looking at this DAB channel, um, more um, right means higher numbers. So it's like the reverse of like a standard right field looking thing. So we want below this to be ignored. That's right. And above this, um, I'm going to click some for the moment. We can add a class right now. You can either just click other, um, or you can go to the annotation tab, go to the class list, add a class, collagen. 
and make your above thresholds. Oh, yeah. I love that it like instant updates. Uh, that wasn't true in 0 0.3 and it, it's a it's nice. Um, if nothing's showing up on your screen, turn on your uh, classifier. Um, oh, so this is nice. It starts updating in wherever you're looking and then kind of circles out slowly. Um, so if to prevent QPath from using a lot of resources that you don't care, that you don't want, just zoom in and focus on one region and it won't update everything else until you're ready. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the original and then turn um, the classifier on and off with C. And what we're looking for here is, uh, are you happy with the threshold? I'd say this, this, I, that's not the kind of fiber I'm looking for. So maybe 0.25. There we go. Um, if you're already here, you can try what what different resolutions gets you. Um, so like if you want these really thin fibers, yeah. If you want these, you have to use full resolution because they're really only one or two pixels thick. Um, but if you don't, they can go away. Uh, you can try. I'm never happy using zero smoothing because it just picks up like individual pixels and it's just annoying. Um, but even like half a sigma is usually enough or one. Um, so it finds this thick fibrous capsule. It finds the medium fibers in the middle. So on. Let's look at some other tissues. Um, here, yeah. finding all this, but basically nothing in there. Okay. Um, a question I get a lot is people want to only find the like fibrous uh, pathological collagen. They don't want to find the normal collagen. And uh, that's not actually possible because this stain just sees collagen. Um, so even your healthy controls will have some amount, like this relatively healthy liver, you're going to find uh, these vessel collagen. It's there, you can't make it go away. Um, what you can do is hope that your, whatever your fibrotic disease is, it has more. So you're comparing five to 10 instead of zero to five. Okay. Um, we're going to name this classifier collagen. Save. Okay, from here, we could create objects and make lots of little detections around every single thing. Um, that is a very computationally intensive process. And you don't necessarily care about actually what's the shape of the collagen. Like, I want to know how much there is. I don't care if it's is all connected or disconnected or whatever. Um, sometimes you do, but right now all I just want is how much collagen is there. Um, so instead, I'm going to select the three annotations and hit measure. This is still gonna take a couple minutes, but faster than doing the segmentation. Um, while it's thinking, uh, this, uh, um, uh, what Pete was talking about in his talk about the difference between a classifier and uh, object creation, we have classified the pixels. We know which pixels are collagen and which pixels are not collagen. Um, but we haven't done, taken that second step of tracing around the shapes to actually make an object. Um, you you can do that, um, but we haven't done that. Um, so you won't have the collagen shape objects at the end. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, yeah, current selection, because I already selected the annotations. If you didn't, just put annotations here. Um, yours might take a little longer. This is a pretty powerful laptop. Um, but now we can click on any annotation, go to the annotations tab. And now we have this new measurement that just popped up. Um, and so in this, this bit here, there's 67,000 microns squared of collagen out of no, two zeros, 10 million microns squared of tissue. So like 0.6%. 
Whereas in this one, um, it is 600,000 divided by 3 million. Um, so that's 20%, 20%, which is good because this one's clearly has more. Um, so a lot faster than creating objects, we just have areas. And we can report fibrosis. Could we use the same process with a typical trichrome without? I've done it on trichrome. Um, you have to set your vectors such that you see the blue and then the blue pops up. Um, uh, our core has found that the, the difference between the VED and the fast clean is so distinct that this works really well and you just set a threshold and you're done. The trichrome, the blue of the collagen tends to bleed into the purple of the um, the muscle layers. So it's just a little harder. It's just a little more big. It works. I've done it. There's, um, I think in the folder, uh, yeah, did, it, did we include this? We did not. We're going to get them from the link and going to move up. Yeah, OK. Um, but from the perspective of the robustness, yeah. this works. This works really well. Trichrome sometimes works. Yeah. OK, any questions? It, right now, it's the same because, um, well, the classifier hasn't changed. If I change this, it'll take a second to update. This number is now like hard written, um, and I can do whatever and it stays. The live will eventually update to whatever this new Take is. a small annotation. Yeah. That way. And this one should update fast. Because I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, very, very easy. Um, oh, in about an hour, we're going to get into scripting this. Um, but basically what you do is you copy the same deconvolution. You copy the um, creation of the tissue detection, uh, and you copy the pixel classifier measurements. Um, as long as you're staying within the project, all the classifiers themselves exist, and you don't have to remake them. Um, and so like you can batch this in four lines code. And that's... Uh, what I meant about the robustness of this stain versus the trichrome, which is usually coming out a lot more variable. That's also true. All right. Can everyone load intestine ADPS? PAS. So, in the beautiful, beautiful land of the uh, intestine, over here, we have some pancreas, and it's another Swiss roll where we have this tall and slender uh, villi. And in villi, we have those goblet cells that we've seen on day one, and they are very nicely stained. This 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 time, they're stained very, very intensely. Um, you can see where the name's coming from. They look like little goblets. They produce a lot of mucus. Uh, you can sometimes catch them in the process of um, um, disposing of this mucus or throwing it into the lumen of the crypt. Those are intestinal crypts. That's where your stem cells are. And in this area, there is also a lot of planet cells. They um, produce antimicrobial peptides that are important for your overall gut health. And what I like about this image is that it contains... Um, some sort of verification for the quality of that staining because in the colon, which is depicted here, there should be no planet cells, okay? So um, there are no granules that are sitting at the bottom of this of, of the script. There might be something that is slightly stained with that other shade, um, but it's nothing coming close to what you're seeing here where you have those nicely packed granules um, inside the planet cells. And um, and this area is actually pretty inflamed. You can see how um, there is a loss of cells that create that protective mucus barrier. And that's one of the things that you could score when you're working with a coli smoke. Um, I'm going to turn on a gamma of 0 0.45. Um, so we're looking for the planet cells. So th this... This color of purple is not differentiated enough from the blues and the teals and the um, whatever this is 
muscle layer, muscle layer beige-ish kind of picks up stuff um, to just rely on stand convolution, look at one channel, set a threshold. You're going to get everything. It's just not clean enough. And so we're going to have to use machine learning to actually teach QPath what is a parent cell. Um, as always, we're going to start with stain deconvolution, but we're going to do it a little bit differently this time um, because it's hard to get a good region um, of, of like this, that purple color. So zoom in on somewhere with some sample background. Thank you, Wendy. Um, draw a really tiny square of just white. Is that? Yeah. Um, try to avoid any little specks of tissue. You want like the closest we have to pure white. Um, go to image. Um, make sure this says either Brightfield Other or Brightfield DAB. And then double click. Well, while this is selected, double click on background. Um, it asks you, do you confirm you want to set deconvolution background? Yes. And so instead of going through that other window where it sets three vectors, we're going to like one by one set them exactly. And so it takes the average value in here and sets the background. Then uh, I'm going to go in here and find, find a region with some like really good, nice pure panel cells area, like maybe this. Sorry. Um, if you talk about this in the forum, you'll get yelled at. So. Why? They, they like only single um, stain for training this. You can. Obviously, this is the real way you're going to end up doing it, but yep. everyone will always recommend only stain one thing at a time to get your pure oh, stain. Oh, yeah, that. Okay. Is, I mean, it's... when you're doing hematoxin and the DAV, and not as easy to do when you're doing more complex histological stain. Yep. yep. Um, no. Yes, if you had, if you could do PAS alone, AB alone, that would be great. But this is real life. The thing is that the combination of the two does not equal yeah. one plus the other. It's yeah. a mixture. Of yeah. So find a tiny. I'm talking like 10, 20 pixel region of the purest purple you can find, um, and set that to the DAB. Same thing. Double click. Yes, I want to set my vector. Okay. Yes. What's up? Yeah. Find um, a region with the uh, really small, like 10, 10 pixels with pure purple kind of cell style staining. Um, this monitor is. I, this is the time when it's actually really nice to have like a color calibrated monitor. And um, if you're going to do pathology, it is actually worth spending the money on it. Um, the, it's more different. You in my may case. want to change the gamut of yeah, not like to make it a little bit less, uh, yeah, maybe here. Yeah. yeah, that's better. Yeah, you can see it's more purple. Um, then delete that and find a region with this like dark blue color. Again, just tiny little rectangle and set, um, draw that, double click on hematoxylin and set same vectors. Now we can do two to get at this blue color and three to get at the panel cells. But you can see it's, it's messy. It's like, you still see this, you still see all of this. It's just not it's not a separate as you really want it to be. I'm going to make a new class called, could you spell uh, something like that? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so now we're going to train a pixel classifier. This is going to feel in many, many ways identical to training a machine learning object classifier. Um, the concepts are the same. It's just how we're doing the annotations are going to change. And um, this time, you don't need to have cells pre-detected. We're working with the pixels directly. Um, and we're going to make heavy use of this uh, polyline tool. Uh, so this, um, it'll chase your mouse if you just hold down and draw, or you can 
click, 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 and it will do that. Double click to end. So zoom in here and draw. I like swirls just because I like swirls. It doesn't really matter. You just want to draw. Um, you want to capture, you want to overlay some pixels that are part of your panel cells. Um, and make sure as you're doing this, you're actually setting the class appropriately. So what it's, what the training data is the pixels that are underneath your line. And it's grabbing one pixel at a time as it's tracing your mouse. Um, it is, uh, it's worth focusing heavily on the edges of objects because that's where the mistakes happen. Again, uh, I should have auto set on for all of this. Um, and make sure you don't just focus on one crypt, move around the tissue. I mean, it, the shape doesn't matter at all. It is not, it does not care about that. You can do 10 short lines, you can do one line, long line. It's just grabbing pixel by pixel underneath. Okay. Then switch to the other class and grab, grab some pixels of other structures. So these are between the pen of the cells. These are whatever this is. Whatever this is. Okay. Bunch of this muscle layer. Oh, this is that purple, and I don't want to count it, so I'm definitely going to mark that. Um, and also do just a couple in the true white space. Um, just for example, background. Okay. At some point, many of you are probably thinking, wouldn't it be easier to just use the brush tool or the wand tool and uh, grab like a whole bunch of area and get a lot of training data all at once and then be done? And no, resist that instinct. Um, because what you're doing here is getting a whole lot of training data of very low variety. You are training it incredibly well on this particular millimeter square of tissue and then expecting it to extrapolate to everywhere else and it doesn't extrapolate well, it only knows what you've seen. Um, so as unintuitive as it is, it is better to use the polyline tool, only grab a couple pixels and be very careful about what you're including in your training. Don't just like go crazy. Um, because the pen of, oh, nope, see, that was the wrong button. Um, uh, by the way, you can click here or you can press V. Once you have a bunch of annotations, go to classify, pixel classification, train pixel classifier. Um, and hit live prediction. And it immediately says, I have trained that everything is actually the other class. Why? Yeah, that's the resolution. Yeah. Um, so, Right at first, your results probably don't look great. Mine certainly don't. So I'm going to adjust the features. And these are the um, all, all the image processing steps that Pete was talking about. And you do that by going to edit. Um, so by default, it uses the red, green, blue channels. And instead, I want it to use the hematoxyl and adab channels that we default. That was why we bothered with that. Um, and I'm going to throw in scales of uh, half, one, and two. Um, so this looks at tiny details, medium details, and larger details. And uh, actually, that's better results pretty pretty immediately just by changing that. Yep. Edit. 
So metoxalin and DAP, because that way it's using the deconvolution factors we said. Scales, zero, one, and two. Um, and also while we're here, I'll throw in Laplacian of Gaussian um, under features. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. Hematoxylin and depth. There we go. Oh. Yeah, now we've got some decent. Okay. So it's seeing this layer wrong. So I'm going to give it some training data saying this is wrong. Um, and it's not seeing some of this dim uh, tissue. I'm going to tell it this is tissue. I do that. Okay. Yeah, that's looking reasonable. Um, okay. And from here, the process is just like with the object classifiers. Find a mistake, correct the mistake. Update. Um, the edges are often where the problems happen. So I spend a lot of time annotating exactly where I see the boundary as being. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about what this classifier is doing, um, within this screen, it's a classifier. Instead of saying show classification, um, you can step through all of these features. Um, so what this is showing you is every combination of features we, we selected. So two channels, uh, Gaussian and Laplacian of Gaussian scales uh, half one, two. So that's uh, 12. This is what the image looks like um, when you've applied a Gaussian filter on a hematoxylin channel at a scale of one half. Um, so it makes the kind of cells really dark. Um, this is the Laplacian of the Gaussian. Um, you can adjust here, I can make that a zero, um, and it makes them really bright. And so um, what this pixel classifier is doing is taking for every pixel, it's got the uh, hematoxylin and DAG values, and it's got these 12 additional values. And it's throwing all of that into a big machine and saying, come up with a pattern. Come up with a rule, set of rules. Um, and uh, I like to use this to figure out what features I actually want. Um, like maybe, um, let's throw in weighted deviation and Hessian determinant just to see what happens. I see it might have been the one first. Yeah. Um, so, okay, we went through Gaussian. Laplacian of Gaussian. This is the weighted deviation. Um, this is an edge filter. So if you're doing fibros, having like, I think something like edge filters are really great. If you're doing blobs, they, they're not always great. Uh, this is the Hessian. Uh, let me, no, other way. Other way. I almost never. What even is that show? So, if we were interested in goblet cells, mm -hmm. if we were interested in goblet cells, the Hessian would actually be really useful. It is much less useful to find the path cells. Um, and then you can do the exact same thing on the other channel, um, which you can see it's actually reversed. Now the Gaussian is bright, the Laplacian is dim. The weighted deviation is still just kind of random angles. And the Gaussian looks okay. I don't usually use it, it's good as well. So in your object classifier, you can use measurement maps to figure out which features are gonna be helpful for a classifier, right? Because then you can visually see that and here, because it's working on pixels and not objects, you can use those to visually see which of the features will be useful to create 
your classifier, auto feed into your classifier. I'm going to say this is good. Um, hit save. Um, and then I'm going to just draw a very small. Uh, oh, I did something really dumb there. Um, when I drew the rectangle, I had other and auto set on, which means it has now classified everything in that, all of those pixels as other. Is everyone, some, everyone okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you could, yeah, you could see what it did to my uh, pie chart. Like, yeah, that was bad. So hit, um, I'm going to unclassify that by telling it it's the none class, and then I get back to where I was. <laughs> This is also the danger of uh, updating your classifier with live selected. Yep. So if I'm drawing a lot of extra annotations and I already have a bunch of annotations, I would immediately turn off live prediction just because you get that spin and you look at every time you're everything up. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so draw relatively small rectangle. I don't know, a couple of groups. Create objects. Parent object is the selected region. Um, and here, I want detections, and I want them to be small, like two microns, something like that, and split objects. Um, so this is going to make detection objects of a minimum size of two, and hit OK. I'm going to close this. I'm going to. So it did not make any objects that traced around the ignore class, because the whole point is it's ignored. It did make objects tracing around the uh, other class, which I'm going to just, well, I'm going to just ignore them. I'm going to just hide them. Um, because the ones I really wanted to show you are these. Um, Okay, two was too small, was too large. It should have been maybe one or maybe a half. But now you, now you have objects representing object ten cells. Yep, I'm going to objects, delete, delete all detections. Yes. Um, uh, I'm going to load my pixel classifier, the one that was called this. I'm going to select the smallish rectangle. I'm going to create objects in the current selection. Uh, I thought those would, I missed too many. So I'm going to drop my size uh, thresholds to half. Um, and it's important to write detection here because this is the light, low memory objects. And hit OK. Um, it's also written there, though, that says two when it two is all like that. So now we've got lots of little guidance. Um, it didn't pick up every single thing. Because also because when you kind of look at that image, sometimes you're having difficulty making it out, right? So it, it's it's not as clean as it should be for those kind of features. If you were to look at the goblet cells, which are bigger, you probably wouldn't have as much of a difficulty. Now you may have a difficulty of um, uh, differentiating between this. And that, but we've learned a little bit about different uh, image processing operations that can help you to find elongated things versus find blocks. 